I'm married to Rosa. I met Rosa in graduate school. Rosa's from Oriolo, Calabro. Since I'm doing this interview in Calabria, I should get that in there. She was born in Oriolo, Calabro. She also came to the States at a very young age. First at 12, then she went back, came back at 14. And her parents uh, settled in El uh, Elkhart, Indiana. Now that's an interesting story. Why Elkhart, Indiana? Literally in the middle of nowhere. Is that... Uh, her grandfather, her father's father, had come to the United States and her father had lost sort of, tra sort of lost track of him. And he came here looking for him. And he found him in Indiana, basically. Uh, her grandfather started, uh, came to the States, New York, got a job working on the railroad. And he worked his way west. Then when he got to Indiana or to Elkhart, he just stopped. There were other Italians there. He just stopped and settled there. And that's how they they ended up being in Elkhart, Indiana, which I think it's a story that's repeated over and over again with Italian-Americans through, through the decades, things like that. So we were married uh, 40 years ago, and we have two daughters and three grandchildren. And our daughters are uh, Michelle and Stephanie. Uh, the grandchildren, Ellie, or Isabel, Isabella, my, my daughter calls her Ellie, of course. Sophia, and my daughter calls her Sophie. And then we have Beatrice with the other daughter. And Beatrice is only one and a half years old. Ellie is 11, uh, Isabel. And you can already start to see that she's going to be a teenager pretty soon. The angst that teenagers have is starting, is starting to creep into that child. But they're fun to be with. I just don't see enough of them. That's the problem because they live in Chicago and we live in Florida. And we sort of go back and forth, but not enough. But that's... The story of my family in America is, is, is interesting. It's a, little, it's a little different than others, let's say. Uh, we came to America, we came to the United States in 1957. Uh, my mother worked um, for a family that, that came summers to Bordighera uh, on vacation. She worked for them as a, uh, as a babysitter. And uh, after a couple of years, they, I, I don't know what, how it happened and what pushed them to do this, but they sponsored us uh, to come to immigrate to the United States. Uh, now normally, and the, the stories that we know, it's usually the husband that comes first, or a, or a husband and a son, things like that. Ours is a little bit different. My mother came first. My mother came to the United States first, or went to the United States first, uh, because she was born in, uh, in the Principality of Monaco, in the little town of Beausoleil, where my grandparents had a, had a butcher shop. Uh, she left in 1955, uh, a woman from Pina, a small village in the mountains of the Introterra Ligure. Uh, she left from Nice, and this is this is uh, quite uh, an odyssey, let's say, and one of those, uh, those um, Pan Am Clippers. Uh, she went from uh, Nice to Barcelona, Barcelona to Lis Lisbon, Lisbon to the Azores, the Azores to Boston, Boston, New York, New York, My uh, Miami. Uh, she tells she tells me she's told me a few times that her ankles were at least twice the size of what they normally are from sitting so long. I'm sure she probably didn't get up very much, get up out of her seat very much. She was very shy, and uh, and she stayed for a year and a half, and then she came to get us, my father and I, and we went uh, in 1957, December of 1957, we uh, went to uh, to Stanford, Connecticut, and that's where I grew up, and. Um, uh, other Italians that we became friends with found them work. Then my father uh, uh, started working and in, uh, in this uh, 
in this uh, delicatessen, and um, so and from there, you know, I, I, grew, I basically grew up in the States. I was born, I'm Italian because I was born in Italy, but I grew up in the United States. But as we were saying before, you know, lots of scholarship has been done, especially from the American side, um, on this story. Uh, because in some ways, you know, people feel that in their, you know, in their soul, in their gut, that it is their story. But it must be said that it's also a history of Italy, not just an American history. It's a history of Italy because uh, there's a wonderful book published in 1991 by Rodolfo Di Biasio, I Quattro Caminanti, short novel, around 110 pages, which he put together from over 400 letters, and lots of letters, that his brothers, the Quattro Caminanti, brought back to the mother. And it shows, I mean, it shows about life in the United States, but it also shows what happens to families here in Italy when parts of them leave, because a lot of them never came back. They lost touch, etc., etc. Uh, there's a wonderful short story by, by, um, by Pirandello, L'altro figlio. Again, what happens to a mother, what, and, 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 and there are others, there are others, obviously Pasquale's great poem, etc., there are others. And, but it's, it's never really been fully recognized, let's say, by Italians, by Italy. Now, part of it could be that a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, the elite, the intellectual elite that visited, that visited Italy, uh, the United States in the first half of the 20th century did not write too many very good opinion of Italian-Americans. Giuseppe Brezzolini was probably the most damaged in many ways. There's an interesting story between Tuziani and Brezzolini because Brezzolini made fun of or dismissed what he called the Italietta. And Tuziani, if you've read his poetry, sort of the, the poet of the Italietta. But now things might be changing. Something very good happened last this past March. Uh, we can almost, we can call it historic, why not, you know, we're, we're all for superlatives, we'll call it historic, and it was. Uh, there was a meeting in Bellagio with nine of us from the United States and nine professors from Italy. And we discussed, right, we really discussed, I mean, excuse me, this is, this is one of the topics that we discussed about why isn't Italy done more. Maybe something will happen. There's a wonderful program now, <laughs> which, we're all, which I'm speaking from here in Calabria. Uh, this course that... Uh, uh, seems to be doing very well. I mean, it's just many enthusiastic students. Last summer, I also had the, the, the pleasure of doing something like this in, in a course in Italian literature in Parma. And I really don't know how that, uh, how that was. It was not part of a course per se, like this one is. It was something that was added at, the, at, at, the, uh, uh, at, at a moment's notice, and it was kind of, you know, it might not have been flowing with the course. But so things might be changing. We have to see. And also this book, as I mentioned, I think I mentioned it before, I believe, by Francesco Durante, these two amazing volumes, one that takes, that basically goes from the, from the Revolutionary War to 1800, and the other one 1800 to, or 1980, excuse me, and the other one 1880 to 1943, 1950, where that cycle, that first, you know, that cycle of immigrants, let's say, ends, and it ends with Joseph Tuziani. It starts maybe with, uh, I'm not sure who it starts with, but uh, it does end around that time. And, and, I mean, it continues. Italian writers keep on coming to Italian. Intellectual Italian writers do come to America, do write, but it's a different type of literature. It's a different type of immigration. Well, I came to the United States with my family. In 1957, and I was nine years old. And when people say, "Are you an immigrant? Did you emigrate?" I said, "No, not really." I was in "Non avevo voce in capitolo." They took me there. Okay, they took me to the states. So in many ways, I'm more American than anything else. I don't have that uh, that uh, what's the word I'm looking for that io diviso that 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 problem would be with my Italian and my American. I just went there very early. I do, you know, I, I know that I'm Italian and I know and I come to Italy a lot and things like that. But the things that you read out in novels and in poems of Italian American literature, I mean I understand it, but it's not something that I feel, that I've ever really felt. 
Uh, although I, you know, I remember a lot of the issues as a child when I didn't speak English, and uh, uh, when one incident, especially, uh, I remember one incident where a young man and we kind of became friends. This was in the third grade, third elementary. He was writing the word. We were the only ones in the room, and he wrote the word F U C K. And he was telling me, how do you say this, Paolo? <laughs> and so I was repeating it, not knowing. And then the, the, the teacher came in and she just went crazy, you know, because, and, and, but she understood. So it, those kind of things, you know, all in good nature. Or, or when I would go to lunch and my mother would make me a sandwich with, uh, I don't know, salami and provolone. And everybody would laugh at me because they, they had their Wonder Bread and peanut butter and jelly. And I don't know if you know what Wonder Bread is. It's one of these one of these breads that when you take the slice and you squish it, it doesn't come back. It remains squished and things like that. And But then, you know, we, I went back there the first time when I was 13. And for a while there, well, my, well, as long as my grandmother was alive, my father's mother, every summer my father sent me to Italy. He paid for the whole thing. So that was, you know, when she passed away, it was a little bit different, but that's okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I basically grew up, grew up in the United States. I grew up in the United States, and uh, uh, I do remember that for a while there I couldn't really speak Italian anymore because I was so concentrated in learning English, wanting to become American. As a matter of fact, I don't think I, I think I spoke both languages badly now, you know, until I learned one. And Italian came, up, came back. But I remember in college I was taking a course in Italian composition, and in, you know, it got to the point where instead of saying lo zio, I would say il zio. And those kind of mistakes we, we all made and things like that, and eventually it came back. I went to high school, college, graduate school, and in the end, although I wanted to go to Berkeley in California, I went to Indiana University because they, they were the first to come, over, to come over with an assistantship and with money. And that's where I met my wife over 40 years ago, and we've been t together ever since. We have two daughters, three grandchildren, and everybody seems to be seems to be very relatively happy. Who knows? But I think they are. And uh, I became a professor. Now, how, why did I become a professor? Mm. Uh, I went to Middlebury College for my masters. I got in. I was a lousy student, by the way. I got in, and I went to Florence. But why did I want to go get a master? Because I did not want to go to work. Basically, that's why I did that. I did not want to go to work with my father. And so, I, and then in Italy, I started reading some things. I did a course on the Liberata, on Jerusalem Liberata. I did a course on Michelangelo. And I did a course on, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, no, Michelangelo was the summer after. I did a course on Pavese Vittorini and a course on uh, Linguistica with, uh, uh, with Giovanni, no, Storia della Lingua, with Giovanni Nencioni. And for those that don't know who he is, he's the president of the Crusca, really excellent man, and a man so generous with his time which was not, it was not uh, common for Italian professors to be generous with their time at the time. I remember the professor of uh, Moderna, uh, Literatura Moderna, Pavese Vittorini, in the old system where the, where the courses started in November and they ended in June. We saw him for the first time in April, to give you an idea how the system worked. So I went and I said, I said well, this makes some sense. So I came back. I got an offer in Indiana, I went, and I met Rose, and the rest is basically history. Uh, we've been moving around some. We lived in Louisiana, we lived in Chicago, and now we live in Florida. It's been my good fortune to be invited to come to Calabria, to University of Calabria, to participate in an experiment. Professor Margarita Ganet is very, very... Uh, very, very generous, invited me and a few other top flight scholars and teachers. And uh, it's the first course of its kind uh, where in the, in the, under the auspices of Italianistica, there's a course that deals with Italian-American literature and culture. Uh, doesn't sound like it's too extravagant, but if you know the Italian school system, university system, this is quite a move, a courageous move on her part. And to Buddha, we teach it in English. It's been taught in English. So I've been here for a week and did approximately nine hours of lesson on the writers of um, 
the first, not the first wave, yeah, the first wave of the of the immigrant writers that wrote in Italian or actually or wrote in English too, but they were immigrant writers, and with uh, with sort of the same experiences of be, of coming here, uh, having trouble with language because you know if you want if you don't think about it, well you know you live Italy, you leave Italy, you come here, and then you start your life. No, that's only the first part of the voyage. The second part, when you come here, you realize, boy, this place is much different. I don't know anybody. I don't. I can't speak. I cannot make myself understood. I become silent. I become silent, and uh, so it's a long and arduous process, and that of becoming assimilated, if you want to, I guess, and uh, and to be, you know, on your way to becoming an, an American or an Italian American, and these these feelings, these themes. Uh, these ideas are expressed in this type of literature. So that's what I did here. The students were amazing. Actually, I prepared a program that was a little too too easy, too light, because I wasn't sure what I would, it's, you know, if I'm doing it in English, I really wasn't quite sure what their level was, would they understand. Uh, they were amazing. They were really good. They followed, they came to class, which I wasn't sure if they would do that. And we had some good discussions. And at the end here, a couple of them have told me that they would like to do some dissert a dissertation on some of the things that we talked about this week. So I think it was, I think it was rather successful. You know, we had our ups and downs and everything, but I think it was rather successful. And uh, it was a, and I hope to do it again in the future. If uh, and uh, it was quite good. It was quite good. I, it was a great experience. It was a learning experience for me also. Mm-hmm.